Local first responders spent the last two years adapting to the constraints of the pandemic. But when it comes to some small fire districts, Jose sat down with some leaders to talk about their unique challenges that existed even before COVID. Jose, what did you find out? Yeah, Lydia, they'll tell you that happened, you know, even before all of that started. Fire chiefs in Tubac and Rio Rico, for example, will tell you they want to invest in hiring and keeping their smaller crews for the long term. But new capable talent may also be more willing to come or stay in Santa Cruz County if station facilities can help them do the best possible job. There's always physical strain, but there's always mental strain and, and COVID just really exasperated that for us. You've probably heard the phrase two heads are better than one, and it takes two crew members a shift to answer the call for two back fire district. Yeah, I think the big thing now is to make sure that our folks um, understand how important they are to our success. And in four years, Chief Cheryl Horvath has led the district. Two of them required making necessary changes to serve the public and the 160 square mile area it serves. I think COVID um, really took some of that away from us and made it really difficult because we all had to isolate from each other. Sitting down inside Station 1, Horvath says while she and her staff work through a cultural assessment, two key pieces will play a part in making sure Tubac Fire can respond to the community's emergency needs. I can send you a call. Finding younger recruits, okay. Yeah. And it helps if they're homegrown, like the ones we met at Station 1. Then Horvath says it's crucial to train them to be both firefighter and paramedic. We can't get there overnight. Um, so, so the retention piece is really, really critical. Um, we can't be the rotating door. And there's been some recent success with the regional EMT Academy in Santa Cruz County. Because down at the Rio Rico Medical and Fire District, Chief Adam Amezaga has brought on some of that coveted talent. I have an additional six recruits right now in the academy. And I'll tell you this, I'm so impressed by the people that we're recruiting. Amezaga understands it's hard to compete with larger districts that can pay higher wages. That's why he says Rio Rico is also paying individuals to study and earn their EMT certificates. But back in Tubac, part of the conversation about retaining firefighters and keeping morale high led us back to Station One's living quarters, yeah, this is a reminder of how the district once called of, on volunteers to put out the fire. To, well, it's older. It doesn't have the ventilation system like I was talking to you about before. Station Three and Four were built in uh, 2010, 2011. Those are modern fire stations. And when a building is 50 years old, as Horvath says, it isn't up to date on other health and safety standards. This is our busiest station. Uh, we respond north to the county line and, and, you know, south past Rio Rico High School. This station responds everywhere. So a solution would be building a new station for both Tubac and Rio Rico's districts. In Tubac, Chief Horvath says money doesn't appear to be the main hurdle so much as it is enough approval from taxpayers to rebuild. It has been a little bit of a struggle uh, with, uh, with some folks in the community, and mm -hmm. I totally understand where they're coming from. And in Rio Rico, Chief Amezaga says he has enough support behind the district for a new station, but is still working on getting the funding they need. It's a very old station. It requires a lot of work and it would be, we've already had people come in and look at it. And it would be much cheaper to build a brand new station than it would be to renovate it. So looking ahead, Two Back Fire says it will continue to apply for those federal grants and funding where it can. The rising price in materials, like many other costs, likely means a bigger budget in Two Back's case. Chief Horvath tells me on the higher end that could cost five and a half million dollars. Now later this week, we'll take a different look at how another local fire district is catching up to a growing population that will need enough crews to respond to any emergency.